So this is a collection of original projectiles from the, the Civil War. These have all been uh, dug on battlefields in, in the east. Um, this round right here is a, called a Spencer round. It looks much more like a modern cartridge with a uh, copper or brass case, a uh, powder charge, and then the bullet inserted in it. It went into a gun called a Spencer that had a tubular magazine that held seven rounds. So it could be fired seven times, and then the tubular magazine could be changed for a full magazine in about 10 seconds. Um, this is a an original, this is called buck and ball. The small pieces are called buckshot and the round ball, of course. These were fired out of very inaccurate smoothbore rifles or smoothbore muskets. Uh, because of their smoothbore with round projectiles, they're very inaccurate. So they would fire one ball with three pieces of buckshot, which gave the soldier a better chance of hitting the enemy. Uh, even at a fairly short range of a hundred yards. Most of the rest of these are called mini balls, uh, named after a French Lieutenant Manet who invented the mini ball. They have a hollow end. When put in the gun and fired, the gas pressure expands the hollow end and seals them in the barrel and engages the rifling, the, the spiral grooves curved in the rifled barrel uh, to give them a, a, uh, a spin when they come out of the barrel so they will act as a gyroscope and go straight. Um, this small piece here is the percussion cap. This is what ignited these guns. The powder and mini ball went in the barrel and then the percussion cap was put on a cone outside the gun and struck with a hammer. This here is a mini ball. Once the gun was loaded, there were only two ways to unload the gun. One was to fire the gun, which of course was inappropriate in camp. The, uh, the, your your uh, fellow soldiers might think you're under attack. So the way the gun had to be unloaded, because you couldn't just shake this out, it was tight in the barrel, was the hole right there in the end is from a screw. You put that on the, a screw on the end of your ramrod, shoved it down in there, engaged it in the end of the mini ball, twisted it into the soft lead ball, and then yanked it out and then poured out the powder. That's called worming out a ball, and that was done when you didn't uh, need to fire the gun and you wanted to unload it. Can you show this one? So this was the typical musket that was used. It is a rifled musket. It does have a spiral in the bore. Um, and this is where the percussion cap went to ignite the powder charge. The powder and bullet are in the barrel. The copper or brass percussion cap is put on this cone. The gun is moved to full cock. When you pull the trigger, the mainspring will snap this hammer onto that percussion cap that would be there, igniting mercury fulminate, which would cause a flame to travel down the hole into the uh, breech of the barrel and ignite the powder and fire the gun. Like that. To show the school. Oh, let's see, it's just, this is the one I couldn't get out. So this is exactly the one. wrong one. These are muzzle-loading guns. They require a ramrod. So the powder was poured in the barrel, followed by the mini ball or projectile, and then the soldier was required to drive the ball to the base of the barrel, compressing the powder to prepare it to fire the gun. The threaded end on the ramrod was used to uh, attach tools to, to either worm out, as we described, a bullet, or to put cleaning tools in to clean the, uh, the musket after it was used. Yeah. So you have an adapter. Yeah, here. So that thread was driven into the end of the uh, mini ball to, to pull it from the barrel if you wanted to unload the gun.